All right, I'm joined today by the Unibasist. We're going to have a little chit-chat, talk about some stuff, some issues, or maybe just shoot the shit about whatever we feel like, because that's what we do here at Blind Views. I don't know if you noticed, but we got our drop shots. A little bit more about that later. All right, so a little while ago, we, used to, we were talking about uh, Orianthe and her being labeled the uh, hottest female guitarist or the best female guitarist. And we had a little chit chat. We won't get into it because that was on the little clip before you guys already saw that. But we'll kind of pick up from there and we'll do a little bit of talking about some music content. Uh, we'll talk about pop music and some other things. Um, because once we were talking about her and female, that female thing, I kind of got to thinking about some of these. Well, actually, because you said about. Um, well, they're not the artist or not the writer, the creator, which led me to start thinking about people like Beyonce and some others that never, ever wrote anything. And even the stuff that they do sing that are written for them is the most mundane, basic, like, if you like, you should put a ring on it. If you like, uh, 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 uh. I mean, that's pretty much the song right there. And they are so popular Oh, it's pop music and even the you know the the Britney Spears and all them that never ever wrote anything now I know that's a whole different thing because they're the front person the star the name not the actual you know like a they're the investment yes they're not a guitar player or a drummer but it just got me thinking about those kind of people and they are pop music the popular what everybody likes and it's so, to me, anyway, it's the most simplistic and mundane music that's out there. So why do you think it's so popular? I know I have my opinions, but... Uh, I have seen videos on YouTube, and I have uh, looked up websites and read some stuff. The first thing that really stunned me was I found out that like 80% of the popular tunes are written by two guys one is a guy named max martin who is i don't know if he's swedish or danish but it's that area and the other guy i can't remember his full name but i think he he got the moniker dr luke and 80 percent of the popular tunes the are written by these two guys yes i've heard that also uh and I've heard, like back in the day, the old school way was you would find somebody who is talented, who presents themselves well, and then you invest money in and try to develop them. That's what your producers and whatnot did. Right. Nowadays, uh, they make an investment in somebody, and to ensure that investment pays off, you got these two guys writing the songs for them. You've got stylists working to make sure they look just right. Uh, a lot of the money that's invested is in a media presence of some short, of some sort where they are on the radio. They are in soundtracks. They are in commercials on the radio right, and or right. television. And you are just bombarded with it until it's familiar enough to you that you're just, oh, that's okay. See, that's, that's why I think it's popular is because... If, well, the repetition, like you said, in the olden days, it was you got in your car, you turn on the radio, and on your way to work, you heard the same 10 songs every day because they were just on that loop, that rotation, and they just pounded it in your brain. You were like, I have to like it. I hear it all the time. I must like it. And like you said, on, on soundtracks. But now, yeah, now it's a little bit different. You know, I'm yes. an old dude, so it was way different back then. But now, with the social media and everything, it's still the same thing. It's. It's on iTunes, and, and like I said, the money's put in, and 
it's it's there and it's in your face and it's it's always back in the day the old school uh traditions were to a get discovered b uh you would submit yourself to companies and see if they would help you out. Now, that's one thing to be discovered. you got to be the right guy in the right place, or you find out where somebody's going to be, and you put on a show, and they... Yeah, yeah. The other way, the other way was uh, there was people who would record their own material, press their own album, or make their own tapes, and they would call them demos, and they would get them to... Uh, certain A and R important uh, people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they would just on their own. Like I think the police did this. They made a, a, a an EP of five songs, sold it at shows, and went to a record company and said, "We did this. We sold this many copies. How about a development deal?" And they were like, "Hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea." Right. And some people got. It was all these people all did their own legwork. They did. Uh, all their own production, so to speak, in the beginning. Uh, they had people who would help them. You go to a recording studio, you work out some stuff. Maybe the guy at the recording studio knows somebody and he passes it on for you. Right. There was many different, uh, there many different ways to get into the business. Nowadays, it's you're just discovered. Somebody sees you. Hey, that's the look we're looking for. Let's pull them in. And let's teach them how to be popular. Somebody, somebody sees a Justin Bieber on YouTube and says, "Hey, this little kid got talent. He got a look. We can we make can, money. We can make money. We can mold him and do whatever we want." Yes, I can sell that. Look at that. That's it, working. I can sell that. Yes, yes. That and I always think the difference between. Uh, I know it's stupid and kitschy, but uh, the difference between American Idol and The Voice, where American Idol really isn't about talent it is but it's also about the look and the sellability i mean if you got some rocking dude that has the long hair and uh can really belt out you know i don't know like a good old rock and roll tune and is far better than any of the other ones if the second best person has a that pop look and sings pop music they're gonna win every time because they're more sellable as opposed to when you watch if you ever watch the voice where they had that thing where they spin around they don't see them they yeah. just listen to them now after it's over and the picks are made they're all there but i always but whenever i watched american idol the few times i did i was like man this is this is not really a talent show this is a who's going to be more popular who can we sell quicker and better yeah it's kind of like well, if I take this guy, I can hedge my bet that I'll make money. Look at yeah, cause look at like Susan Boyle. Didn't yeah. she have like a killer voice, and then she looked like fucking Maud? Yes. Or, yeah, Quasimodo uh, and Maud had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. Oh man, she was a voice wrapped up in a bag of shit, and she got some minor fame. Uh, same thing with uh, who was that Asian guy? A Wong. She bang. She oh, bang. she bang. Yeah. yeah, he was entertaining for about a minute or so, and then that was it. Yeah, and that really that kind of pissed me off because that was basically like uh, let's make fun of let's make fun of this nerd for a while, and then we'll go back to what we were really doing. Kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, uh, well, how about this one? How about I shouldn't point fingers because I like to bully. Sometimes it's fun, but yeah, that's that's way too public to be. Yeah, I don't mind it if I'm at work and and me and one guy are, are screwing around with some guy there. It's you know, the nucleus is just three people. I'm right. not really doing that much damage. I'm doing damage, but not that much damage. <laughs> and, You're not floating it out on the internet to the world. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's not as public as it would be with like, is it William Hong or? I don't remember the dude's name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. All right, how, this this popped in my mind when you were talking about when we were talking about this. How about back in the day when there was two amazing dudes with amazing voices but were fat and didn't have the look, so <laughs> they got two pretty boys to stand up and lip sync, and it was called Milli Vanilli. Remember oh, that shit? Yeah, and I remember when those guys tried to prove that they could sing. 
They were horrible. Oh, my God. They were a paint-by-number version of whatever was really out there. Yep. Oh, geez. Those two dudes that were singing in the background, don't look at the man behind the curtain. Those guys had amazing voices, man. But according to the music world at the time, they didn't have the look. Here's one for you. Christopher Cross. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Remember how everybody was into his music, and then he made a personal appearance, and everybody was like, <laughs> they were... He scared the crap out of kids. They were <laughs> oh my goodness! There's a lot of there's a lot of them. I mean, a lot a lot that uh, well, what was uh, the chick that flubbed it on uh, SNL? Oh, um, the, a Simpson. Simpson, yeah, the Simpson girl. She blew it on SNL. Um. Then we have uh, I had I heard. I'll tell you what the SNL thing did open my eyes for the fact that the band was playing live. But the vocal track was a lip sync, right? Because I, I have always been of the mind that either they're lip syncing or they're not. And when I say lip syncing, I mean they're playing a track, and these people are pretending to play to it. Yes. Or they're actually playing live, and a lot of that you can tell by, uh, like, if you listen to the snare, reverb on a snare is a studio trick. If you hear it when they're supposed to be live, then it's like, ah, oh, they're lip syncing. Right. But the fact that the band was playing live, the drummer had a click track, and then the vocals came in, mm -hmm. and she was just lip syncing. I was like, I never thought of that. I never thought of like a karaoke kind of yeah. crap old thing. Yeah, you know, it's kind of the reverse, where the band's playing and then the vocals. And the vocals, yeah. But yeah, that really opened my eyes to, wow, they will just do anything to make sure they look good. And I heard, I think this this was yours. I think it was on actually on Howard Stern. But uh, they had a live track of, was it Ricky Martin? I think it might have been Ricky Martin. But anyway, it was uh, kind of like the stage. Oh, the uh, monitor mix? Yeah. And it was, <laughs> what was going on out front was his recorded voice. The band was playing it, and you heard him singing actually singing screaming into the microphone so he was mouthing the words right but he was singing and they recorded that part and oh my god it sounded like a cat with his tail caught in the door being smacked in the face it was <laughs> horrible <coughs> you know uh, when linda mccartney when they brought out that recording of linda mccartney singing i thought to myself that you can't do that because her monitor mix might have been specific so that she hit certain tones uh -huh. and the melody she was singing might have been something that they were working on to be a certain way like in the mix it sounds perfect but by itself sounds terrible yeah and i've heard that before i've done that before where <laughs> i sing uh I'll sing the main line, and then I'll sing another line just a little bit lower. Right, And right. I can't hit the high. So my high is all really, really feminine and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I mix it down so you can just barely hear it, but you can't make out that I'm I'm doing falsetto. It just makes it full, yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds better because you got more of a choral kind of backdrop for your, your, your backing vocal. But if you were to pull that out and just hear that high end, FYI. Yeah. Oh, geez. I had to hear it, and I really, I was messing with the EQ. I was like, I can make this butch. <laughs> what we do here is go back, 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 back.